Good afternoon. My name is Tim, Tim Lynch. I'm your host of Legal Lines. Legal Lines is brought to you by the Massachusetts LGBTQ Bar Association. And we are live the third Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. Uh, our show uh, today is, has my friend here, John, who comes from Uganda. Uh, John uh, Abdullah Wombedi. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Um, is from Uganda. He's currently in the United States seeking asylum uh, because, unfortunately, uh, some anti-gay laws have been recently passed there. Uh, so we're going to discuss with John what, what it was like in Uganda before these laws, what was going on there, and, unfortunately, what has it been since these laws, these laws were passed. Um, so, and if you'd like to call in with any questions, please feel free to do so. Our number here is 617-708-3290. Uh, so, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, basically where you grew up and um, what kind of work you did for... Uh Thank you much. Thank you very much, Lee, uh, Tim, for hosting me here tonight, and uh, I'm so glad. Um, I was born and raised in Uganda, and um, my parents were Christians, so I was raised as a Christian. And I went through my education, and um, I graduated with an equivalent of an associate uh, degree um, in teaching. And also, I went on to graduate with something similar in tours and travel. Um, growing up, life was interesting because uh, we never really had too much problems like perhaps I would think today. Um, as a gay man, I knew myself at an early age because I felt and I could see that how my body spoke to me when I saw another man was different when how my body spoke to me when I saw a woman. And I kept struggling with it, being that I had grown up in a family, in an environment where everybody knew my dad was in politics and my mom was uh, a government servant. She was a midwife. So we had about gay people. They spoke about gay people, but they were never condemned. They were never persecuted. No one went to touch their homes. They lived as part of the society, and some of them were appreciated as people of uniqueness, different people. And no one ever called them pedophiles, neither. So and, um, you were telling me earlier, um, you yourself formed an organization back in 2001 in Uganda? Yes. OK, well, 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 tell us a little about that. Uh, Spectrum Uganda Initiatives um, was registered in 2004, but before its registration, we had already gone into organizing as gay men. And this was specifically because we had been in touch with one of the founder members of the organization who had told us or enlightened us more about the risks of uh, same sex or anosex. So in the process, we carried out a research in Kampala and we noticed that people were totally very ignorant about the situation or the risks of anosex. And this happened in a way from the analysis that most people thought or perceived that anosex was STD, STI free, and also was HIV free. So, so this organization was started out of healthcare concerns because people did not understand that um, you could get HIV, AIDS uh, through gay sex, Better as right. well as heterosexual exactly. sex. You know, it's the same. You can get yeah. through through any sexual conduct. You can get HIV. Yes. So, so you and formed this organization. Was it solely for health, you know, giving out health uh, care information, or were there other reasons? 
Um, we were focusing on HIV AIDS because at that time we know that, that there was a, a huge campaign going around the globe and Uganda was on, on, on record and on track for, you know, successfully speaking more on HIV. And at that time we thought it was very important for us to have a gay organization that would address the health concerns of gay people in Uganda. And apart from that, we also thought there was need for us to know that as Ugandans, we had rights and we had the privilege to enjoy those rights like any other Ugandan without being discriminated based on our sexual orientation. And at the same time, um, to receive protection from the state like any other uh, citizen. So, okay, so it's not only um, to bring awareness that you know, people can get HIV uh, through sex, be it, be it um, homosexual sex or heterosexual sex, but it also was to, to bring about some awareness of what people's rights are. Exactly. And to advocate for them. Exactly. Okay, how would you go about doing that? Um, so what happened is um, we start, when these organizations were formed, uh, we managed to be able to reach out to the LGBTI community. And through that, we had workshops. We had uh, safe spaces where we would gather uh, during events, where we, social events, we always spoke more and advised people that there was need for them to go around, to go on and check uh, for their HIV status and to use condoms. Unfortunately, there was a problem of lubricants because it was never there, more or less people never even knew about lubricants and uh, we only got up to know <clears throat> about lubricants very much later. So it was quite a challenge and over the couple, over the so many years, there has been success. There has been? Success. success. We've been successful. Oh, People, success, very successful, good. Yeah, there has been success in a way that uh, there's now, people now know that they need to use condoms and lubricants, not condoms with gel or not condoms with petroleum jelly or not condoms with, you know, any other product because that would break down the condom. So you were teaching people how, how safe practices. Yeah. Um, and while you were doing this, was there any interference from anybody, uh, the government or any other organization? All this happened so well, and it only, things started changing from 2009. 2009. Yeah, when the religious uh, fundamentalists came, the evangelicals came to Uganda from America, and then they, they started uh, sowing hate and, you know, hate speeches among people. And the churches started going very open about um, criminalizing gay people and having them, to have them persecuted and condemned. And all this time, we still were moving on successfully, but it all again wasn't at the time when the bill that was introduced in 2009, the anti-homosexual bill, was signed into law in 2014, and everything went down. So before we get to that, um, you know, as I, as I like to understand it, Life in Uganda, you can be, you were openly gay, and people in general treated you with respect. That was, it was, it was, there was no problem. Because if I look at the Uganda I grew up before 2009, it was a good place. I lived happily, I was happy, because I would go to the bars. We never had really gay bars, but we had friendly bars and no one would ever throw you out of a bar. They could be, a, there were once in a while where people were thrown out of bars, but 
of course, like for any other person, if you if you misbehave, sure, you could, yeah. But the 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 the, the moment people knew you were gay, no one would attack you. It was people wouldn't mind, which is totally different from what happens today. So so you know if you told people um, you worked with you were gay before all this change, you didn't have any fears of being fired or anything? From my from my side, I know my first years at work, my bosses knew I was my bosses knew I was gay. But I was never fired from my work. Because one, I was I was I was I was productive and I delivered. What I did was out of my work time because that was my private life. Though a couple of times there were blackmails where people tried to come in at my workplace or to tell my boss about my sexuality, but they all never brought it up as a discussion to discuss about it with me. So people went into your boss and told them you were gay? Yeah. And, they, that, and anything happened as a result? It's blackmail. It These were all results of blackmail. Sure. Yeah. But, um, if the fact that there could be blackmail means that there could be something bad happening if yeah. they found out you were gay. I mean, in a, in a situation like it is one, either they want to fail you or they want to expose you. So by coming to my boss and telling my boss I'm gay, or I have men at my house, what do they expect? They expect to hear the next day that, oh, John has been fired from work. Sure. You know? sure. But that didn't happen. It didn't happen. And perhaps I'm just among the lucky few who could have survived such a scenario in, in Uganda. Uh, I know most people have lost jobs because of that. Not just because of recent, but just because People, a few or some people just believe that homosexuality is a curse. Oh, okay. So, so all right, so before 2009, there was some prejudice beneath the surface, but you yourself were able to live your life, and, and you, know, you knew other people who, by and large, went about their business. Nobody, there was no big uproar over people being gay. Um, and then 2009, uh, you said some American evangelicals, and I, as, as, I, as I recall my own reading in the papers, that's from Western Massachusetts, that's where these people came from. And they come to Uganda and they stir up um, all sorts of things. Why don't you tell us about that? What was it like 2009 when these Americans come in uh, from Massachusetts of all places, come to, into Uganda? What was it like? I remember how we got the information that there was going to be a workshop and they had invited, um, the Family Life Network had invited all people in authority, teachers, policemen, religious leaders who were going to be there. It was a three day uh, workshop. And we, we, we decided to send in a few people who were not very visible to go and understand what was happening. And the message there was that homosexuals have an agenda to recruit children from schools into homosexuality. Okay. Um, okay, you, the, the group that, you identified the group that came over there was the...